a collector took a gamble on a high dollar coin that we wanted and he lost. Hey guys, it's Drew with Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about sometimes you should take a Kusha Collectibles offer. Let's get this video started. So a few weeks ago, we were interested in picking up this 1925S California commemorative half dollar graded mint state 67. It had a really beautiful toning on the obverse of the coin, as you can see from these photos. The guy posted it on eBay, and he was starting it off at a $1 auction, and he was going to let it rip, right? And so what we did instead is before one bid was placed, we said, hey, what would you take for this coin? Oddly enough, his eBay store was his Gmail. So what we did was we emailed him and we tried to get a deal stru struck before, you know, the auction went. And so we ended up talking to him on the phone, giving him a call, sending him an offer of $2,200 for this coin. And so, you know, we thought it was a fair offer. We thought we'd make 10%. And he said, you know, I'm going to let the auction run. We're going to see what happens. And then I said, okay, well, I'm going to just give you one more price for you to think about. And I said, 2,400 bucks. I don't even know if I can make any money at that point, but I really do like California's. And I do like the toning on this coin. And so he said, well, I'm just going to let it run. But if I change my mind, I'll let you know. So we just said, hey, maybe we can get it less than 2,400 or maybe less than 2,200. And so the auction went for seven days and it ended just over $1,950. We ended up getting this coin in a few days ago. We ended up selling it to a nice collector who really likes high grade commems. And so there's a few lessons to be learned here about, you know, maybe sometimes you should take, uh, you know, someone's offer. Um, for us personally, when I'm selling coins, if there's a profit to be made and I can go move that money into a new coin for you guys to take a look at, a lot of times I do take offers from people maybe at shows or if I'm doing a big deal. Sometimes it's about the big picture. Sometimes it's not about that singular coin that you want to take a gamble on, roll the dice on, and think you're going to make the big bucks. Sometimes it's just saying, hey, that's a good offer. It's a fair offer. Let's take Drew's offer. Right now, I'm going to post exactly what 1925S Californias are selling for. Ours will be popping up on there also for what we paid, but there's the rest below it. I thought it was fair market value to everything else that was uh, being posted. So, um, we ended up selling this coin, which I don't share that too often because people get very offended. Like I said, I only wanted to make 10% to begin with, but we ended up selling this coin for 2,500 bucks. And after fees, we made about $500 in the coin. So sometimes it's worth the wait for you. If you give someone a generous offer and they don't want to sell it to you, maybe it's just good to let it wait out and see what happens. But at the same time, you should also be thankful that, hey, maybe this deal wasn't for me. I have money and I, there's a lot of great coins out there. Maybe I can strike a deal with somebody else that wants to work with me. And here's a big lesson and something that we just took a look at ourselves and said, man, if you would have taken that money, I would have sent him a check for 2200 bucks or a check for $2,400. But instead, he's only going to get $1,950-ish. And then he's going to lose 13% or 9% based on if he has an eBay store or not. So big loss for him, which is you know unfortunate, but he did gamble with a coin and he thought he was getting big bucks. Sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. You just got to accept it, take the money and run. A lot of great things happen with this coin. We're very fortunate enough to be able to hold it, work with it, learn a lesson from it. And we just sent this coin out a few days ago, so we couldn't show you in hand. But we do have a lot of nice new purchases from the Houston Coin Show this weekend. And so if you guys want to check those out, AkushaCollectibles.com. But let's show you guys those coins right now. Alrighty guys, so we have two trays lined up for you today. Wanted to show you, like I said, some coins from the Houston show. There was a lot of people, I think they said there was over 750 people that showed up to the show, which is nice. This is an 1827 cap plus half, square base two, pretty original looking coin. Definitely a nice mid-grade. Still has some remaining luster to it as well. I wanted, I got that coin because it didn't really have a cleany look to it. A lot of the cap plus halves do, and they were passed. And uh, I don't know, I like the original look. We have this 1821 in VG8, definitely a low grade, but very affordable. Then we have this really nice 1879S Morgan Dollar and 66 Star. It's just a super flashy, semi proof like obverse. 
and the reverse is just a normal business strike. So they didn't give it the PL designation, but still a neat piece. We have a nice PQ 1921 Morgan Dollar. The luster is incredible, nice gemmy luster, but just a few too many ticks in the field for this coin to be graded any higher. And a distracting toning spot on the reverse. Then we have this 1903 O Barber Dime. I bought this one because it's tougher to get. A lot of the Philly mints are easy, but the New Orleans mints are pretty tough. This one is no exception. A lot of these haven't sold in many years, and I wanted to give this a, a shot. I felt it was a unique offering. Then we have a key date 33S Walking Liberty Half. Bought this because of the holder. It's an OGH holder. It's the luster is pretty strong. It's hard to pick up on, but I do think it's accurately graded. Then we have this 1934 Texas Commemorative Half. It's a great Min State 63 OGH holder, CEC approved. It was tough finding comps on these with the CAC sticker, but when I saw the coin in hand, we're not going to make a whole ton of money on this coin, but it is going to get people attracted to our website and people that you know try to find collectors that like uh, looking for commems like this one. I think it's a really nice addition if someone was wanting to start a commem set. And then we have this. 1854 seated half dime. We have it with the arrows, and it's it's not really the most original coin, but it is nice mid grade. Has some luster still on the coin as well. I felt it was like I said another kind of affordable, unique offering. Most of the time, when you want early type coins, you have to spend a few hundred bucks. I think this one's just around a hundred. And the second tray, we're gonna have a few NGC coins to show you guys. First one is this 1875. I'm sorry, 1876. Seated half, super original look to the coin. Liberty is pretty much full down by the shield, as you can see. And that's what I like about it. Once again, it's kind of like the Capos Half Series, pretty tough to find original. Then we have a bunch of 1943 Jefferson Nichols in 67 plus, almost mark free. Really nice looks to the coin. Have some subtle toning, but. I think it's a really nice war nickel that you could only spend about around 100 bucks on, which is not too bad. We have this 43S Walker. It's great Min State 63. It is a weak strike, as most S Mint Walkers are. You can see that all the way from the breastplate down the leg. Just a really phenomenal coin. Then we have kind of a more modern coin. It's a 2016 W uh, Standing Liberty Quarter. It's 24 karat gold. Great special proof 70. Oh my gosh, signed by Anna. Yeah, nothing crazy about the coin, but people still collect these. It's almost like a, an homage to the Standing Liberty Quarter set, and so people want to pick these up. And we have two Morgans to show you guys this ADS Morgan in 65. Nice, gemmy luster of the coin. Really flashy uh, uh, reverse as well. Then we have this old NGC holder. That's an 1883 CC. Has nice rim toning to the coin. And people like these older NGC holders. I actually had a few collectors reach out and ask about them. Most of the time you're sticking to Rattlers or OGHs, but... Next coin I want to show you is this 1930 Lincoln Cent. It's great Min State 66 Red. Nice flashy coin, but I would call it 66 Red Brown today just because of the brown that's on the reverse. I don't know, give me you guys' thoughts down below. Decent coin for sure. And it's in that 2.1, 2.2 gen holder from PCGS. So I guess people are collecting those still and they like them. So I wanted to try that one out. And this 1939D is the last coin I want to show you guys today. 65 full bands, a little off-white, nice, better date. Don't use stickers for your coins. Just a little bit of my two cents. I would stick to uh, inputting it online just so you guys can keep track. And uh, don't spend an hour cleaning off slabs like I do. So thank you guys for taking a look at all of our new purchases. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like. Comment your thoughts on what we had to speak about today. Have you guys kind of uh, been on either side of deals like this? Let me know down below. Subscribe if you're new. I think we're about to hit 5,000 subscribers finally. We're glad you're a part. See you guys in the next video.